Okay, so yesterday was September 23rd, first day of fall for 2019. I made a bunch of Snapchat filters and lenses that I published onto the platform. If you want those lenses or filters, you can grab them down below in the description or I'll put it somewhere here in this video. Today I was gonna go ahead and make more Snapchat lenses, but I figured I'd go ahead and make a video showing you guys my process behind this and how I make my Snapchat lenses. So for today's filter, I'm gonna make a simple filter that features typical cliche fall things that you can go ahead and edit or make yourself. So to make these types of filters, you're gonna need Snapchat's Lens Studio, which is a software that allows you to create and publish filters onto Snapchat. You can go over to Snapchat's website for that, or I'll put the link down below in the description and you can click and download it from there. So once you have Lens Studio open and downloaded, you can go over to their templates category on the left. So to start it off, let's go down to the segmentation template down on the bottom right. Okay, so our pre-made template is open and we have our projects pretty much ready to begin. So the first thing I like to do is I jump over to the resource panel and I add all the different things that I need for this lens. All my image assets and anything that I need to make beforehand, my icons and stuff like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the image texture on the right side where the heart is. And what we do is you can either directly add your image or you can right click and press clear. From there, I wanna drag in the resource that I want to go behind the lens, and this is gonna kinda of add a layer or almost more like a, a green screen effect to the filter. So I'm gonna grab my image and I'm gonna drag it over to the image texture and drop it in. So just like that, it's super simple. I have my image texture behind the person's back, and from there, I'm gonna edit how I want it to look. So I'm not really feeling the color pink for this fall vibe, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna choose a color that's kind of more relevant. So I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and light. I don't want it to be too bold of a background, which hides everything else behind you. I want it to be kind of transparent. So you can edit that by altering the color uh, intensity on the color alpha. And then I like to check it on the webcam just to make sure that it appears how I want it to be. So you can see behind me, it's pretty much completely covered by the uh, segmentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the color alpha. That way you can see the things going on behind my picture. So there we go, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more because I want it to be more transparent. Okay, so after I have that done, I wanna change how large leaves look behind me. And I also wanna change the angle and the speed that they're going. So to change this, I go over to tile density and I'm gonna bring this down and that's actually gonna make them larger. If I bring the density up, it's gonna make them extremely tiny and it's gonna look more like rain or something like that. So you can see it looks like that. I'm gonna bring it down and it's gonna be bigger and bigger every time I do that. So there we go, that's the look I'm going for. I want it to look like the leaves are falling behind us because it is fall, it is autumn, and that's what happens, but not really out here in California. So say you don't like the speed in which the lens segmentation is moving behind you. If it looks too fast or too much at a weird angle, you can alter that by going down to the scroll speed of either X or the Y value and change it from there. Be careful, these are kind of sensitive. If you just go too far to the left or the right, these things will be moving a lot faster than you'd want them to. Unless you're going for like a wind or blizzard uh, appearance, then that would be good. But since we just want it to look like some casual leaves falling, we're just gonna make it pretty smooth and pretty slow. I'm actually honestly kind of liking that. If you're at exactly zero, zero, the leaves are gonna be completely still and they're not gonna be moving at all. Keep playing with it until you have your desired look. Okay, so I think I have the segmentation template the way I want it to be. So now I'm gonna start altering what I want added to my lens to give it the filter that I'm looking for. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a face image to go over the eyes and then a face inset to place eyes over the image. So my overall goal is to make leaf eyes. So the first thing I wanna do for that is I'm gonna to go to add new and I'm gonna click on face effects. And then from there, I'm gonna to go to face image. Where is it? There we go. So face image is just gonna place an image in front of the face and then it's gonna track it wherever it goes as long as it's binded to the head. I'm gonna move these over the eyes and you can see they lock in when they get there. Then I'm gonna duplicate the same image and drag it over to the other eye. So I said I was gonna put leafs on my eyes. So I already have my leaf PNG that I'm gonna add to the texture box right here. Once you drag and drop that in, you'll see that it just places it directly over the eye. And I'll do the same thing for the other image. Okay, so the leaves are officially on the eye, but you can see it's tracking, but not officially showing the eye. And I don't wanna make the leaf transparent because I want it to look like we have leaf eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale these up 
and then we're going to add a face inset to place another eye on top of these eyes. Now I'm going to go up to the add new um, button over in the objects panel and I'm going to pick face inset. So right away they have it so it places your mouth as the inset, but what you can do is you can go over to face region and pick a different feature. So for the right eye, I'm going to add the right eye. Next, I'm going to add another face inset. And I'm going to do the same thing. You can always alter how the eyes will look on the leaves by changing the blend mode. If you want it to maybe look more realistic or more natural, um, which is not really natural at all, you can kind of alter how you want it to look from there. Play around with the settings, find whatever you're looking for. I'm just going to keep it normal and go from there. Okay, so we have our segmentation filter. We have the leaves on our eyes. We have the face inset on our eyes. So it makes it look like we have our own leaf eyes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a text and add my own custom font. So what's different from this feature of the lens is instead of placing it to a specific body part or behind our bodies, this one's just gonna stay on top of the screen and it's gonna pretty much stay there either on the world lens or on our face lens. Go over to add new. We're gonna pick text object. And you can see just like that, it places it wherever you have the text selected. So I'm going to go ahead and move that. So if you notice that the text object got directly added to the face that we have, I'm going to go ahead and move it to the top. That way it's off those items. So once you have your text object added and it's not directly connected to any of the other features that we have, we can go ahead and start altering what we write. So because it's fall, I'm going to say fall is here. And I want it to be directly below us and stay in front of the screen at all times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the position. Okay, so finally I have the letters positioned where I want it to be on the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the font size and the actual font. So what I like to do is I'm going to go and choose and drag the font I have chosen. I'm going to start off with this font right here and I'm just going to drag and drop it into the custom font category and you can see it directly changes it right away in the uh, preview panel. Okay, so the text is where I want it to be. It's the font I want it to be, but you can see that it's a little too thin and it may stay hidden if it's in a, say, a, a very bright place or behind someone who is wearing a white t-shirt. So what I want to do is I want to alter either the color, the drop shadow, or the outline to make it pop on the image more. So for this one, I actually kind of like the lighter color. I can maybe make it a little more brown, a little more orange, a little more beige like that, but I kind of want to keep that lighter color. So what I want to do to make it pop instead is I'm going to add a drop shadow. Once you check the drop shadow box, you can see you get more options to edit it even further. You can change the color of the drop shadow, you can change the angle of the drop shadow, and you can also change the distance the drop shadow is from the lettering that you chose. Okay, there we go. I have the lettering the way I want it to be. I went ahead and changed the color up a little bit. I also added the drop shadow and I didn't do too much to the drop shadow. I just kind of made it just a little bit of its own background or its own outline, but not fully around each part of the letter. From there, I went ahead and went to advanced layout. And what I did is I changed the letter spacing because I thought the letters were a little too thin, a little too spaced out, and it kind of gets hard to read. I want this one to be more bold and noticeable right off the start. So, so far our lens is looking pretty good. We have our text, we have our background, and we have our um, images on our eyes. So to change things up even more, I wanted to add some stuff to a face mask. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to add new. I'm gonna add face effects, face mask. And for this one, I wanna add the leaf freckles that I've already pre-made. So to add those, I'm gonna go over to the texture panel and I'm gonna drag, drop, or add in the image that I have down below, which are the fall autumn freckles. So to get these perfectly placed right off the bat, you have to download the face template um, from Lens Studio, which allows you to make stuff in Photoshop. And then you can export the files and the artboards over to um, your computer to then put into Lens Studio. So to do this, I'm gonna go up to the objects panel in the top left, click add new. Then I'm gonna scroll down to color correction. And then from here, you wanna pick a color correction that best fits your lens. You can make your own and import, which I'll show you, show you guys in a different video. But for this one, I am going to just go with crispy warm, which I think looks pretty good and on point with the fall season. But I think the alpha intensity is a little too much. So I'm going to bring that down kind of close to halfway. And we still have our warm look for our fall look. So I think 
our lens is pretty much done and ready to be published. Before we update the project info, I'd recommend you play with what it looks like on specific models of phones. That way you can tell if it needs to be edited so it's not cropped off or something's not awkwardly positioned. So you can do that by going to the bottom of the preview panel and click on the device that it's simulating on. I always just keep it on the iPhone X because that's what I'm using and most of my friends are using. So what I'm gonna do now just to fully test it is I'm gonna send it over to my phone, click on the top right corner and push, let's push your lens. I kind of like it overall, I think it looks pretty good. The text can be lowered a little bit and overall I think the colors look pretty good. So I'm gonna keep it as it is, but I'm gonna drop that text down a little bit. So let's go back to the text feature in the objects panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the Y value and bring it down a little bit. Now I'm gonna push it back to my phone and test it one more time. And there we go, the text is a little bit lower on the screen. So I'm cool with that. Let's go ahead and update the project info and from there, publish. So go up to the project info in the top left right here. So I recommend naming your lens something relevant to what it is. We're gonna call ours fall mask and I'm gonna make sure it works on both cameras and the hint is gonna be to look for face. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this icon and choose one from my selected icons. So here's my image icon that I've made in Photoshop beforehand. I like to do it at about 400 by 400 pixels. I just export it as that and then I can just crop it from there. And I'm gonna save the icon. Next, I'm gonna add a lens preview, which I highly recommend because this helps viewers see what it's gonna look like before they download it. So I'd recommend clicking on a filter that kind of shows what you're trying to get across. So I'm pretty happy with the way this filter looks. I'm gonna press apply. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and publish my lens. That's gonna bring you up to either pick from a community lens or a sponsored lens. Since we're not gonna be running ads for this and it's not for a business, we're gonna jump over to community lens. First things first, add your lens tags. You can add up to eight and I recommend you get them as detailed as possible. Press done once you have all your tags added. Okay, so this is cool. I got my lens tags, I got my lens preview. So now we're ready to press submit. Once you do this, this is gonna put it into the review uh, process with Snapchat. So our fall mask is currently in review. So you just have to wait a little bit. Sometimes it's almost instant. If you add a preview to your lens beforehand, it allows them to see that and kind of process it faster, I noticed. So right now, if I press the uh, refresh icon in the top right, it will likely refresh it and say live. So there we go, our lens is officially live. You can see the other lenses I've published here recently. And from there you can see their views, their shares, and their plays. So there you go, you guys. That is how you make a Snapchat filter. I hope you guys like those fall filters or any of my other ones. Be sure to look them up or find them down below in the description or somewhere around this video. I also post all my lenses onto Snapchat. So if you follow me on Snap, you can see the lenses I'm making currently and the lenses I'm testing. So. Hopefully you guys can follow me there on either Snap or Insta, but that is how you make a fall Snapchat lens. If you guys want more Snapchat lens videos, just comment down below what you wanna see or what you need help with. I'm gonna to try to reach out to all those comments and respond to whatever I can. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the lens today. Just drop a like if you found some value in this video. More filters and more lenses are gonna be coming your way. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.